Winnipeg's offseason continues to move along relatively quietly. They missed out on another free agent, but why might the Jets have been hesitant to sign Daniel Sprung? Find out on tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets. You're locked on the Hockey Jets, your daily podcast on the Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey friends, and welcome to tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Harrison Lee, an avid Winnipeg Jets fan and an online blogger. You can follow me on Twitter at HLivingLoco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. Thanks for making Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on all of your favorite podcasting platforms and YouTube. Doing so, of course, is always free of charge and ensures you never miss another episode. Most of all, we just love and appreciate your support. I am your host, Harrison Lee, an avid Winnipeg Jets fan and an online blogger. You can follow me on Twitter at HLivingLoco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. Now, like I said, uh, you know, coming into the soft season, um, Did have some questions as to what the Jets might do, and so far it's been relatively quiet. Uh, I think Winnipeg has probably um, played it on on the relatively safe side, and I think that's that's fine. I don't think you have to get super aggressive, and I don't hate the decision not to go crazy uh, during free agency and some of that stuff because that does get you in a lot of trouble. Let's just be honest, right? Many teams have done uh, that route, and they have – tied themselves to some pretty big uh, anchors to their um, contract names. So um, in this respect, you know, I don't, I don't really hate what Winnipeg has done necessarily, but I suppose there probably has been at least a little bit of disappointment that the Jets haven't been as aggressive as some people would like. Uh, We'll talk about one particular free agent that just got signed that I find very interesting that he kind of signed for a one-year super cheap deal. We'll talk about this guy in just a moment, but before we go any further, just wanted to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by GameTime. Download the GameTime app, create an account, and be sure to use promo code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Now, like I said, uh, Daniel Sprong just signed with the Vancouver Canucks for one year at uh, a little under one mil, which is a fascinating contract for a lot of reasons. Um Honestly, I I just was a little bit curious as to why not only did Sprong basically go unsigned for for many, many weeks, but he finally finds a team. He only signs for one year. It's literally less than a million. And the GM says something like he has matured or or, uh, grown a lot, which I thought was a really interesting choice of words. Um, Oftentimes, you don't really hear a lot of insight into why players uh, remain free agents or, or seemingly get passed around. And sometimes you hear it much later. And that's when you find out that somebody maybe, um, had some, I don't know, character flaws or something, or there was some other extenuating circumstance as to why they weren't signed. But Sprong has to be one of the most interesting ones because you're talking about a guy who, uh, in like 10 to 12 minutes a night has somehow gotten like 10 to 20 goals a season. That sort of production is really rare for a player uh, who who plays that amount of ice time, right? You don't ever really see that. Morgan Barron, I think, has been one of the fascinating exceptions, which you, you get the sense that Barron maybe has another level to his game. But it's really interesting that Sprong has now bounced between three or four different organizations, and he just can't seem to find a, a place to stop into. Um, and it makes me wonder if the Jets even really extended an offer. The fact that he signed for like almost a league minimum deal is fascinating. Um, again, you don't really see that. Uh, for Vancouver, they're getting you know a proven finisher and somebody who could definitely slot into your middle six and be a really solid upgrade. I, I think back in the first part of his career, there were definitely questions about his defensive game. But over the years, I feel like that's actually uh, started to be less of a problem. He doesn't like man mark aggressively or anything. But look, right? It's it's one of those things where, you know, people will say, well, you, you say the same thing about Kyle Connor, right? He doesn't defend. But the problem is Kyle Connor's paid like seven and a half million. If you're talking about, you know, Sprong, who'd be on the high end, probably making like three million. I you, you just sort of accept that that is an issue, right? There's a level at which the value of what he's doing on the ice um, in terms of his scoring role and stuff does kind of exceed, you know, um, some of the flaws, right? Especially if it's on a cheap contract. 
it's when you start paying players like this a lot of money that you run into some issues. Uh, like a $3 million contract is not that much. Um, 7 million. All right. You're, you're, you're definitely in some pretty bad territory, but I think with Sprong, it's really fascinating that all these teams kind of passed on him. So it makes me wonder if there was something else uh, in his behavior or, or perhaps in the way that he trained or something that made teams a little bit skittish. Is that something that I would have been willing for the jets to overlook? Yeah. I don't know. It'd be worth trying to punt and, and see what happens. Um, you know, I think the Jets have certainly had their fair share of locker room issues, and maybe that was one concern. And I can I can understand that. Um, I, I do wonder if it was worth overlooking in this case, um, or if the Jets were better off not introducing that that potential challenge. In my mind, I mean, I, I feel like without knowing the full details, I would have liked to have seen the Jets go for it. Maybe Sprong wasn't really interested in the Jets. Maybe Winnipeg itself felt like he wasn't going to be better than what they have internally, which, uh, all right, fair enough. Uh, I would like to have seen him maybe fight for a spot in Winnipeg's third line, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I just, I, I look at his production over the years, and it's really hard to walk away from somebody who scores as fairly consistently as he does. Uh, you don't really find guys putting up, you know, I wouldn't say fringe second line numbers because that's that's not entirely true. But I think if you prorated it, I think his production would probably, you know, get in the range of like 40 to 45 points, which if you gave him that amount of ice time, that's that's pretty darn decent uh, given his role. So very interesting. Um, I guess Vancouver is taking a nice little flyer. It's a cheap contract to tell you that one year at like 900 K or just over is really nothing. Uh, very interesting that nobody else was willing to give him that. And it makes me wonder what happened in Detroit. Cause like, I thought for sure the Red Wings would try and bring him back. But the fact that he signed such a minimal contract uh, with Vancouver is it's pretty interesting, right? Um, the ring, the wings just signed uh, Joe Valeno for like uh, a two year, 4.25 or something like that million dollar deal, which, you know, if you're uh, if you're prioritizing Valeno over like Sprong, hmm, yeah, uh, there, there's there's definitely some messaging there. Uh, it suggests that perhaps um, there was some sort of a mismatch, and I can only speculate as to why that is. Uh, we'll find out, I'm sure, over the next few months. But if you're Vancouver right now, I think you're probably feeling pretty good that it was a very low risk bet. There's really no way that it could possibly go wrong, and you have added a potential you know, 15 to 20 goal scorer for almost no money at all. And given that the Canucks are trying to find um, those market inefficiencies to improve their squad without breaking the bank because they don't have a lot of cap space to work with, I think that's a really smart bet. And uh, I, I kind of wish Winnipeg would have been on that. But again, you know, it's not the kind of thing where um, I, I'm, I'm calling this a deal breaker. It is what it is. Uh, Winnipeg doesn't really make a lot of free agent splashes. And I, I think in the context of the overall offseason, I think Winnipeg basically came and went with the free agents that it was really interested in. And we'll talk about, you know, how that sort of plays into my overall assessment so far of the offseason. Uh, I'm going to give you a rough rating. Um, I've alluded to this one before, probably on a previous episode. Um, but, you know, obviously we're still only like probably a little over halfway through the offseason. We'll talk about kind of uh, what is outstanding and how the Jets can, I guess, improve that grade. Because at this point, I don't think that they're going to have a worse offseason, you know, like a, a decline. I think it's only going to get better from here. So uh, we'll dive into that in just a little bit. But before we get, uh, get into like a, a rating for the offseason so far, just wanted to let you know about our friends and partners at Game Time. Obviously, buying tickets is always a pain in the butt. You know, a lot of us have been hit with surprise fees and charges. And, you know, sometimes when you're buying tickets, you find out that you're not actually sure where you're sitting. You have a rough idea on a seat map, and maybe that's enough, but sometimes you buy a seat, and guess what? It's obstructed, or the viewing angle sucks, and it's frustrating, right? It's expensive, and there's a lot of money. Game time totally gets it, and that's why they offer you killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, a lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, 
and you can even see what the view is like from your seat. It takes the guesswork out of buying tickets, and that's why they've also become an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball. It makes getting tickets just like MLB tickets faster and easier, and guess what? The prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch, which if you like uh, saving money, and that's definitely where I sit uh, as an Orioles fan, it's great, right? Getting down to Camden Yards at a discounted rate, I really couldn't complain. And, of course, they also have flash deals, zone deals, and like I said, all backed by their lowest price guarantee and event cancellation protection because they know sometimes things happen and uh, they want to make sure that you have a good time and, and actually enjoy your sporting event or, or, or even a concert, right, uh, when you have the chance to go. So if you want to take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets or any other ticket, Go with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and be sure to use promo code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N N H L for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Hey, friends, and welcome back to tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Every day, thank you so much for rejoining us on tonight's episode as we're just uh, talking a little bit about Winnipeg's overall offseason, how it's gone up to this date. And, you know, it, it's been a, a little bit of a mixed bag for some folks. I think we were probably hoping for maybe a, a little bit more at this point. But by the same token, this is probably about par for the course when it comes to the Jets. Now, like I said, uh, I've kind of come up with a, a rough letter grade for the offseason up to this point. Um, and like I said, this is like an in-progress rating, so don't read too, too much into it. Uh, I expect to, to end this offseason with a, an improved grade of some sort. We'll see how good it gets, depending on what happens with the Cole Perfetti and Rucker McRory deals, but we'll get to that in just a little bit. Uh, before we dive into our letter grade, though, for the offseason, just wanted to let you know for all you Fox Sports or ESPN watchers, if you find yourselves having to turn down the volume because there's too much shouting, you should make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you daily to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked on Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, all part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Now, like I said, uh, circling back to Winnipeg's offseason grade, um, curious to know what your letter grade is. Drop those in the comments below. Um, where I'm at right now is like a B-. minus. Um, I, I think it's better than the C+. Plus. I don't think we're that that bad. But I don't know that it's much higher than that. Um, B minus, I kind of sit here, and you know, in, in the context of all the signings the Jets have made, Winnipeg, for the most part, opted to retain talent more than anything, right? Dylan DeMello would have been one of the biggest free agent defenders to hit the market, and they brought him back on a long-term deal. So that's, that's relatively good. I think one thing I, I do sort of wonder with uh, Dylan is, is how much longer he's going to keep performing at this level. You know, Winnipeg did jettison uh, Brendan Dylan, who's a pretty darn good hockey player and obviously somebody that I was pretty happy um, with his overall performance. I think he really lived up to expectations. I thought he actually exceeded mine in many respects. Um, and his final season with the Jets was pretty much fantastic. So um, I'm happy for him that he secured, you know, a long term contract. Well, not really long, long term, but he got some term with the Devils. Uh, if anyone deserved it, it was definitely him. I, I would not have minded if the Jets brought him back. In fact, I would have been pretty okay with that. He's one of those free agents where it was kind of like I could definitely see an argument either way uh, for extending or, or releasing him. I kind of lean towards letting him move on just because the Jets have a pretty good left side. And at this point, you kind of want Dylan Sandberg to take on the mantle of that role. I think he's really earned it, and I think he's good enough to do it, which is really a compliment to Sandberg because of how good Dylan was, right? Stepping into that into that role and, and assuming that those shoes, um, or I guess in this case, skates, uh, it's it's a lot of responsibility. But if there's one player who I've really consist consistently been impressed by his growth over the years, it's definitely Sandberg. He's, uh, he's been one of our best defenders, and so it's no small you know, testament to how good he's been that he now has Brendan Dillon's role. Uh, with DeMello, the only thing with him, and I, I don't even want to like view this as a downside, but, you know, at his age, you've started to notice that he's slowing down. And that's where I think that there is a, a, a little bit of risk. But the other thing is he's only extended for four years. So you get 
probably two years of, of still relatively solid top four performance. By age 33 or 34, you might start to see that tail off, but if you really have to, you could probably move his cap hit. Uh, I think at this point, though, you know, his, his family is really settled. He loves Winnipeg. Um, and so, like, when it comes to players that are maybe a little bit expensive, but you thought you, you really couldn't live without them, I mean, you just can't hate it, right? And I think the other thing to keep in mind is he signed for the exact length that uh, Josh Morrissey is. That is your bona fide top pairing for the, the time being until something changes. I think that will continue to be the duo unless uh, Salamonson really takes that uh, like exponential leap forward over the next couple of seasons, which I actually wouldn't put it past him. Uh, he continues to be a prospect that I'm fascinated by, but with DeMello, you know, I, I mean, yeah, he was one of those guys that you probably couldn't let go. Um, and he definitely would have been one of the most in demand sought after uh, right-handed defenders and for the cap hit, you know, it's 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 a little expensive, a little bit. Uh, but, I mean, yeah, it's all right. 4.9 million by four years. Really can't be too upset. Um, Colin Miller signing a, a really good value 1.5 mil deal for two seasons. Uh, and then you get uh, Vili Heinola for two years at a little over league minimum. I mean, that's pretty tidy business on the D side. I think they made a lot of smart moves here. Um, I think that they kind of did what they had to with respect to the right side. Uh, I think bringing back Miller and promising him a bigger role is very interesting because they bought out Schmidt uh, and then they brought in Miller and like Miller basically didn't play for the Jets when he was brought in last season. So the fact that he was willing to sign for two years and he gets some guaranteed salary that's actually um, reasonably high for him. It's, it's interesting. It seems to suggest that he's got that, you know, that number 60 role pretty much locked down. So um excited to see him full time i think he's a really good player and i think on the third pairing he should be a, a really nice option although you know with neil pionk being the way that he is i probably wouldn't have minded uh pionk uh perhaps maybe being the one to be bought out but it is what it is that's kind of where i'm 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 maybe tempering the off season grade a little bit i feel like the pionk situation hasn't exactly been resolved and I think if you overuse Neil, he does tend to show uh, some some real issues. But we'll see. Maybe next season is a big surprise and Pionk comes out with a chip on his shoulder and really ready to kick butt. Uh, the other contract that perhaps on the blue line didn't really thrill me was um, Logan Stanley's deal. It, it, OK, look, it is what it is. It's two years. It's one point two five mil. It's not a ton of money, but, you know. I don't know for how much he tends to play and for what his role is. It's a little bit expensive. I won't lie. It's a little bit expensive. Um, I mean, I'm not going to like sit here and really grouse about it, but essentially he's your seventh D. And if you're paying your seventh D over a mil, it, it is a little pricey. It does suggest that they envision some larger role for him. And I just, I don't really see it with this team. Um, I think Heinola is going to come in here and probably immediately be, you know, the the solution to that that third pairing role. Um, you know, no no offense to Stanley, but I think his ability to uh, defend, unfortunately, hasn't always been as stout as you would like it to. Uh, I think in an alternate timeline where Stanley was allowed to be the player that he really is, which is this big bruising offensive def uh, offensively minded uh, defender, I think would have been actually a pretty fun player. Uh, you can see like he's got some confident puck handling and he's got, you know, some smart offensive instincts. It's just, he doesn't get to use it all that much because he was told to be a stay at home type. And I think that's not really the best way to use him. So, um, I mean, that's just kind of a deal where I sort of shrug at some point, every team is going to bring back some players that you're kind of like, eh, you know, not not thrilled with and maybe even a little bit expensive. Uh, it's just one of those things you sort of accept. And I, I've kind of learned to make my peace with it. Uh, would I like the Jets to be perfectly efficient with their cap use? Yes. Um, am I going to like get barking mad about it? No. Um, that's kind of where I sit. And maybe you all have a different assessment of it. But I think that's kind of why like, I continue to be sort of in that B minus range. Um, I think that they did a, a fine job of bringing Cabo Kakinen and uh, Eric Comrie in. Comrie making a return to the Jets. Kakinen, uh, I think, is a really solid backup and somebody who uh, maybe even does enough to earn a raise somewhere else after the season. If there's one thing the Jets have done pretty well, it's uh, kind of inflating some next contract asks on some of these goalies. So 
uh, yeah, you know, it, after the draft too, I think, you know, Winnipeg had a really solid draft. I thought that they made some smart choices. I'm really into Alphonse Frey uh, and, and Kevin He, and I've got time for Kieran Walton too. So, um, you know, maybe these prospects don't excite people that much compared to previous classes, but I think, you know, again, in the grand scheme of things, the Jets have generally done what they came to set out to do. It's a B minus off season and where there's room for growth is how they approach the Ehler situation, uh, what they do with McCordy's trade request. And really if they can get Perfetti locked up, if you get, I would say two of those moves with, you know, really solid returns uh, or, or a, a good long-term deal for Perfetti, I'd probably bump it up to like a B plus or an A minus. Um, if you get all three, then you get an A. Uh, I, I know that it's maybe a little generous considering some of the other moves, but I would say an A. Uh, I, I, I'll be generous. I, I'm fine with that. Um, you hit all three uh, deals out of the park. I mean, you know, that's just tidy business. So got to give credit where credit is due. And I think the Jets uh, potentially have some opportunity to really boost their offseason grade. But like I said, let me know where you're sitting at with this. I, I think... Uh, I might be maybe a little higher than some folks. I think a lot of people are probably a little frustrated, um, but I'm just kind of thinking about the context of the off season where it is at this point. Um, and the fact that the jets tend to be pretty, pretty patient. And so I'm not going to uh, jump the gun and really slash that rating down, but drop your, your grade on the off season below. Uh, or if you want to shoot it at my social meshes, uh, social, oh God, at my social media accounts, be sure to put it on Twitter at HL living loco and at LO underscore Winnipeg jets. But of course, uh, with that in mind, you might be wondering if there are any free agents left that are even worth, uh, giving some time to. And we've had a couple of names that have come, you know, come up pretty routinely over the last few, uh, episodes, I would say, We'll talk about which of those free agents might be worth seeing if they join the Jets uh, in just a little bit. But before we go too much further, just wanted to shout out our friends and partners at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Much like assembling a championship team, you've got to have a roster with all the right parts, and eBay Motors is the exact same way. They've got superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors always has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one vehicle, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or you get your money back. With eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge victories. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusion supply. eBay guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. Hey friends and welcome back to these closing thoughts on tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Every day, thank you so much for rejoining us on tonight's episode as we're just wrapping up really quickly with some final thoughts, uh, talking about, you know, the Jets offseason being pretty quiet, but, you know, there are still some free agents out there that might be worth perhaps splashing a few uh, dollars on. Not a lot, mind you, um, and it's not like the Jets have, like, loads of cap space to burn. Uh, they do have some, but, you know, the Perfetti deal is probably going to take up some of that, and so I think it's probably better for the Jets to... Uh, Avoid signing anything particularly big, which is going to narrow the range of potential UFAs that I would say are worth chasing. One guy that I might be willing to kind of, you know, toss a contract out to, to see what he's got, it's it's Kyler Yamamoto. And look, Yamamoto, I think at this point, is kind of what he is, uh, which is more or less a bottom sixer. Um, I always feel like he's maybe had a, a better reputation than what his deliverables have been. But I'm willing to give it a shot. You know, there was a time when he played uh, in Edmonton and things actually looked pretty good. His his crack instant, though, it it wasn't fantastic. I'll be honest. Uh, 16 points in like 60 games. It's it's pretty modest. Um, the year before with Edmonton, he had like 25 points in around the same amount of time. And then the season before that, I think that's what a lot of people were kind of uh, basing their thoughts on him from, you know, in like almost a full season, he had like 41 points, which 
kind of coming away from that, you do wonder if if maybe there's something in his game that's a little bit untapped. I don't know if the Jets would necessarily be the right team for that. But look, you know, if you're trying to find market inefficiencies and extract value out of something, Yamamoto, I, I find to be an intriguing uh, cheap bet. The worst case scenario, he doesn't really move the needle and he becomes a guy who's more of like a rotational depth piece. But upside, he becomes maybe a solid third line contributor. Maybe he can be that extra finishing presence that, uh, you know, you haven't necessarily gotten with Appleton. Um, Mason, I feel like is is really best suited towards like a fourth line role. Uh, I know Appleton had a fair few points last season, um, but I think you could kind of see that in terms of like the high end offense and skill, there was a slight uh, disconnect there where on the PK and stuff, Appleton, I think has generally been great. But I think if you want, um, you know, cleaner finishing and, and maybe just a little bit more offensive spark, maybe Yamamoto might have that extra layer of skill. Uh, you know, by the same token, his numbers haven't exactly, you know, scorched the page. So I think it's fair to question how much you'd really get there. But, uh, you know, again, he's currently a free agent. He probably wouldn't cost that much. And uh, I, I could see there being maybe a show me deal. Um, last season, he actually had a really uh, low deployment, uh, about 12 minutes a night. And, you know, given that he had like 16 points in those 60 odd games, that's not bad. Uh, you know, you, you could have worse production for that amount of ice time. But again, I guess you just have to wonder how much more is there left in the tank for him. But part of the reason that I'm curious about him is he is, you know, under 26. He's not, you know, a young player per se. I, I wouldn't say he's old either. He's basically kind of in his prime age. Um, he's not like a prospect or anything. But again, if you are trying to find some sort of market inefficiency and extract some value in places that people aren't looking you could do worse than a center who maybe is uh, a guy who could pot, you know, 10, 15 goals a season for you, maybe 10 assists. If you get 25 points out of him on like a $1 million deal, that's pretty darn nice. Uh, the other guy that I've continued to kind of keep an eye on is Philip Zadina. Uh, I suspect Zadina is probably going to somehow end up overseas or something. I just, I don't know why, but I feel like he's, um, I don't know if he's necessarily going to stick around North America. Maybe some team signs him to a minor league deal or something. I feel like he's better than people give him credit for, but for some reason he's just not really been able to secure a contract. Uh, and I, I, I think that's probably a little bit unfair. I think he's actually a pretty decent player. Um, I would have liked to have seen him uh, come into Winnipeg and maybe fight for a spot. I think he's got an interesting uh, potential. Um but, you know, at this point, I mean, he's he's bounced around a lot. And I think with what his projection was when he was drafted, you know, six years ago, it's obvious, it's obvious that he's not going to be that first line talent. But I still like this bet. I, I think that there's room for him to improve. He's only 25, similar age to Yamamoto. And, you know, given the Jets could use some scoring depth and perhaps a bit of extra skill and speed on the wing, do you really have anything to complain about if you bring him in for a cheap deal? No. Uh, to me, it'd be kind of like taking a gamble on Sprong. Uh, Sprong's definitely more proven, I will say that. Um, but look, Philip Zudina, for like a mil, I would be very interested in it. Uh, maybe even a little bit less if you can uh, get that cap hit down. But like, even him being a so-called bad player last year in 72 games, he had like 23 points. And obviously that's not everything, but in like 13 minutes... You could imagine that there might be a little bit more to him. Uh, I think a lot of people are going to see his plus or minus and just probably puke. Um, but look, the Sharks were really bad. Um, I think he's continually been saddled with teams that are just generally very porous defensively. And I don't know how much of that is really on him. So uh, take him out of there, get him into a fresh environment, and maybe there's something to his game that has yet to be fully tapped into. Um, maybe this is all he's ever going to be, but if you get a 20 to 30 point player for a million or less, I mean, that's, that's actually pretty nice value. And I think it also gives the jets, uh, some really nice scoring depth in case of injuries. Cause eventually you will start to see those, but let me know which players you're perhaps interested in giving a contract to. If there's anyone that you feel is underrated who maybe deserves a second chance, uh, drop your perhaps reclamation projects in the comments below or at my social medias at HLivingLoco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. For tonight's episode, though, that's going to be all the time that we have. 
Thanks so much for making Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. We'll be back here tomorrow with more off-season coverage. Hopefully, we have some sort of a trade or something to talk about. Uh, so far, though, it seems like it's been pretty quiet, and perhaps that's just how the Jets are going to be until they get the offer that they love. But like I said, that's all the time we have for tonight. As always, thanks so much for listening. Have a great night, and go Jets go.